for the time being, I'd like to spend a few minutes just explaining what Studio KT is. What is this project? Why are we here? And why are we in Quantong? We're getting these questions, and uh, you know, I, I love to talk about this. We're very passionate about this project. Um, firstly, uh, we're a social enterprise. This is not a money-making venture. Um, the business plan for this, I, I set, was to lose money, so I'm pretty sure I can achieve that <laughs> um, uh, quite easily. Um, we hope we can be self-supporting, self-sustaining as a venture. We're effectively a free platform for grassroots Hong Kong creators. We're a free platform where uh, Hong Kong creators, and I'm using the term creators, not creative artists, or this, because I don't want to sort of connote one type of uh, creative artist or another. Any uh, Hong Kong person, anybody in Hong Kong who wishes to express themselves through creative arts, creative expression, um, subject to it being non-political and non-religious, you know, we're non-sectarian as a, as, a, as a project, is welcome to come here to exhibit their work for free. That's the, the essence of what we're doing. And we really want to target those thousands of young people embedded in Kowloon uh, localities, in Kowloon com communities. This is uh, here in the East Core building in the heart of Hong Kong, very unpretentious part of Hong Kong for a reason. We want to be accessible to young creatives. We want to be accessible and give them the opportunity to come along to show their work, to learn how to curate, and to learn some business skills, some entrepreneurial skills, because artists need, um, need to do that in order to be successful over time. We also uh, have designed Studio KT to be a platform for up and coming, undiscovered artists at pre-seed or seed stage, if, if we're using a venture capital um, kind of analogy, to meet potential funders, to meet philanthropists, to meet family officers, who at this point in time in Hong Kong are really only getting access to the elite. In the big installations, in the big platforms, and the elite artists, we think there's a huge opportunity to really pair up those people who want to invest in art for social good, the big families in Hong Kong, the family offices, with grassroots younger artists who are necessarily more contemporary in, in, uh, in the work that they create, but reflect true Hong Kong culture, true Hong Kong history, through the eyes of uh, people who are envisioning a future and are seeing Hong Kong's uh, you know, thousands of years old culture in, you know, through younger eyes and in a, in a different way. Our platform uh, is virtual as well as being physical. This is a small space and it's, uh, it's, it's really deliberately unpretentious, although we've made it a little bit cool um, uh, uh, in, a, in a sort of minimalistic way. We've got great technology here. Behind the screens that you see here is a pretty sophisticated uh, cloud-based content management and delivery platform. So we can actually run this content anywhere uh, to 10 million people through live streaming or to 10 people sitting in our, in our humble space here. Uh, we're, we're building a community. So not really, this is an idea that's much bigger than, than any space. Uh, and uh, you know, so we have no, no real boundaries. And the idea is simple. The idea is that by catalyzing creative arts amongst Hong Kong's young people, although we're not only a platform for young artists. Um, mature artists, experienced artists are welcome. But for young people, let's say, catalyzing that is an important step forward in terms of social and economic progress in Hong Kong. That creative arts through a non-political lens is a way to celebrate Hong Kong's culture, to envision Hong Kong's, Hong Kong's culture in the future across generations. And we think that that is extremely important. Uh, if we look at hard, cold economics, if we look at a country like South Korea, uh, South Korea has 3% of global cultural uh, contents uh, 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 exports. 50 million people of 8 billion people doing $10.5 billion in exports a year, exporting Korean culture. Hong Kong has all of the ingredients to do that successfully, harnessing the creative inspiration, energy of its young people. Why are we in Kwantung? Because Kwantung is quintessential and essential Hong Kong. We're about to run a, a little uh, immersion for you now, which is audio 
and video. Uh, so enjoy this. Please uh, use the room. Uh, don't just look, don't just look uh, straight ahead. Use uh, the screens here and enjoy. We are in Quantum.
，就係、是、嗰種誒亂、呃、中有序啦，好有創意啦，好有活力啦。就係話誒小學同中學啦，都係喺誒觀塘啦，同埋喺南田度誒、呃、讀書嘅。咁所以咧誒、呃、南田小巴站啦，就係、是、一個都係我成長嘅佢接觸嘅地方。咁四十步嘅特色咧，就係佢會喺觀塘去荃灣，咁中間咧就會經過好多好多地方嘅喎。尤其係我坐上層巴士咧，其實我可以見到人生百態嘅。每一次誒翻學放學咧，我都會透過誒地鐵嘅車廂裏邊嘅誒車窗啦，探索出邊窗外嘅景色。由南田站開始啦，會見到誒觀塘嘅翠屏村啦，去到九龍灣站咧，就會望到咧。誒、呃、牛頭角下村，聞住好香嘅牛腩味，咁一邊畫畫一邊傾偈，呢啲都係有啲一啲好珍貴嘅觀塘回憶。觀眾可以得到嘅，可能係從佢哋回憶同埋佢哋嘅腦海裏面延伸出嚟，係一個互動嘅思考空間。除咗想記錄一啲、呃、城市景觀外貌上嘅轉變之外咧，其實都想誒睇下點樣可以、呃、用一個詩意少少嘅形式，用相片去表達。或者去記錄觀塘呢一區，因為觀塘好多嘢喺度發生，即係有好多藝術文化啊，有好多夾 b a 啲音樂嘅朋友啦。觀塘嘅人流都比較多啦，而我哋喺 A P M 附近 bus 停咧，我希望佢哋可以放鬆下佢心情，唔好俾咁大壓力俾自己。大家都會可能同觀塘人都有個互動，咁就可以、啊、一齊去 enjoy 呢個 music， enjoy 呢個街頭音樂。以前睇到嘅係即係觀塘，我用咗翻工嘅節奏去睇觀塘。咁但係原來到我依家，我又覺得係一個充滿生活感嘅社區咯。喺我手上面呢三張嘅相咁啦，其實分別就喺咧、呃、大概啦係十年之間啦係去拍攝。咁啊可以見到咧，當初咧就呢一個嘅誒裕民坊咧就係一個嘅舊嘅社區嘅面貌，逐漸咧慢慢咧就變到咧今日咧而家有呢個嘅海匯嘅出現。細個嘅時候咧就住喺利園門啦，咁後屘咧咁我就去咗觀塘嗰邊住嘅。咁因為咧喺油塘嗰邊，我就係讀小學啦，咁喺觀塘嗰度讀中學嘅，咁所以咧其實我係 hundred percent 嘅觀塘人嚟嘅。三個一萬後屋苑啦，就可能有啲新嘅高樓大廈，有啲私人屋苑啊之類。咁但係同時間，你原本咧都保留咗一啲可能自己比較舊有嘅嘢，保留翻原有一啲舊有你原本嗰啲面貌咁樣咯。誒、呃，啲街坊鄰舍咧都好好嘅，好互相幫助咯。譬如你有咩困難啊，佢都會誒幫你啦。一句説話講，以前係街坊，而家咧差唔多係真係姊妹嚟㗎啦。咁其實呢兩種形式咧，慢慢去改變咗觀塘啦。我哋相信可能過咗十年或者幾廿年之後咧，觀塘會有一個新嘅面貌咯，就會成為一個觀塘嘅商貿區，就脱離開可能一九五九年嗰陣時嘅觀塘工業區。希望喺個藝術上咧，可以有個突破，令到咧可以將呢一個過去嘅呢一個啊墨記，即係呢一個誒觀塘嘅圓方啦，帶到去未來嘅時候，仍然繼續保留住喺度咯。Running this uh, over the weekend, we had a tremendous launch. Uh, it's a small room, so we ran eight sessions on Saturday and Sunday, and we had some big sessions and some cosy sessions. But well and truly, uh, over you know, 120 people uh, came to to join us, and I just want to acknowledge uh, our team, Peter, Nay, and his team, who all of the content you saw there captured by them. In Quantum, photography, videography, all edited and, and presented and produced. So, and, uh, Peter is a Quantum guy, um, so uh, it's a real passion project for, for he and I. And he said to me at one point, um, "I've discovered so much more about my district in meeting people and talking to local artists here. Most of the artists that have now joined us as Studio KT creators." Uh, either work out of Quantum or they have a story that starts in Quantum. Um, and as you saw in our little mini kind of immersive documentary uh, there, uh, we're here for a reason because this is an unpretentious, non-prestigious place. 
and I mentioned earlier, we want to be accessible and we want to encourage mostly shy young creatives to start to shine and explore. And whatever they're doing, from illustrating to cosplay, we don't care. We want to encourage it. Uh, and we do firmly have a, have a big vision that Hong Kong uh, can be a contemporary creative arts, grassroots creative arts hub, akin to Berlin, akin to Tokyo, akin to Seoul in, in, in South Korea, akin to Shanghai and that this, uh, this is a palpable opportunity for us and we aim to catalyze that and we're going to be relentless and passionate about it. So we're going to have a, a conversation now and I'm really delighted to introduce um, uh, our guests. Firstly, uh, I'll introduce uh, Assistant Professor Brian Wong from Hong Kong University. <laughs> and later on, Brian will introduce our fabulous Studio KT creator and fabulous Hong Kong artist, Pure Hay, who's a cyberpunk illustrator. Stand up, yeah, take it down. Um, so we spent a lot of time with Hay over the, the weekend. He's such a passionate guy. And what we're learning is, however these artists are imagining uh, Hong Kong, they're telling the story of Hong Kong. And mostly capturing some sort of history, he does it by envisioning the future that captures the history in the most beautiful and captivating way. Um, and you'll hear from him. Brian uh, Wong uh, is a, a graduate of Oxford University. He was a Rhodes Scholar uh, and has completed his PhD in philosophy um, with flying colors. He's uh, as young as he looks, uh, an incredible uh, Hong Kong uh, thinker, is uh, uh, written in many journals, uh, uh, diplomat, uh, diplomatic journals, uh, and uh, is, I think, giving all of us hope that moderate thinking, moderate thinking from young people is going to be a healing force for the world in bringing people together. And uh, we just love Brian for, for the force that he brings and the intellect that he brings to that through the eyes of a, of a young person, I think, this is extremely important. So Brian, welcome. Thank you, Damien. Thank you. And uh, Brian's now going to take over and uh, facilitate a, a conversation, share some thoughts. Our theme is catalyzing a vibrant grassroots youth arts and creative culture ecosystem, mouthful, a must for Hong Kong, a must in terms of Hong Kong's social and economic progress. And this, uh, uh, Brian's got a lot to, to share there. And I think then Brian will facilitate a conversation with Pure Hay, who will bring an artist perspective to this. I should also say Pure Hay is Chairman of the Hong Kong Illustrators Association, so it really brings a, a broader perspective uh, from uh, the, the grassroots uh, creative arts segment. Brian, over to you. Uh, thank you, thank you, Damien. It's an honour, a genuine pleasure, and uh, to have a friend like you invite me to, to come over here and share the joys of this wonderful space, this platform, and this opportunity for us all to embrace and reconnect with the roots of what make us Hong Kongers, Kun Tongers, if you will. So I've been asked to sort of conduct an informal Q&A, so I'm going to keep this largely informal. If at any point in time you want to interrupt me, please do. Let's make it more combative and kinetic in that sense. So I'm going to start with an obvious question. You know, David, you've had an incredible career as a financier, as a political activist in Australia, as you know, an advisor, and of course, in running some of the largest insurance companies and divisions of them in the world. Now, you're here in Kuntong, and you've got Studio KT. What brought you to this particular space and this particular project? Hmm. Uh, as an outsider in, in Hong Kong, looking in, um, I, you know, you can bring a perspective that I think Hong Kong people um, miss in their everyday busy lives in terms of the greatness of the city and its own culture. I think as an outsider, that's why tourism is so great. When you visit a place, you know, you really see the power of its culture and, and, and what it brings and its art and its colour and its people through the eyes of a baby, almost, you know. Um, I find, uh, I've been travelling to Hong Kong since I was very, very young and, and, and now permanent resident, been living here for 13 years with my family. Um, uh, I find Hong Kong culture, uh, the urban, the changing, the rapidly changing urban landscape and the grittiness of Hong Kong and the inclusive, the inherent inclusiveness of this city because it's a port city, but because it's a changing city, it's a trading city, 
it's an entrepreneurial city, it's a commercial city, but it's also an ancient Chinese city. Thousands of years of culture. And I find the way that these things come together in a gritty, everyday way to be truly compelling. Um, I, I love this place more than any other place in the world, actually, because, and I find Kontong is the unvarnished um, truth of that. Kontong is the uncurated truth of that, of this menagerie of colour and movement and energy and entrepreneurialism. I also find Kontong, my wife and I, who, uh, Sandra and I, have uh, put this project together and we're funding it. Um, we find Kontong the place where we like to be because we're ordinary people. We find Kontong a place that is inclusive for anybody to get about their business, which is to live and to prosper and to make art or to make business or to, you know, make soup. I, I don't know, it, but <clears throat> Kontong is not central. Um, it's, it's so much better than that, actually, I, I've got to say, because it's, it's quintessential Hong Kong. It's quintessential Hong Kong. So we're here doing this because we love Hong Kong. Um, we uh, love young people. I've worked with a lot of young people in my corporate career. Uh, Manulife, the company I, I have been working for, is based here. It has about 15,000 people um, based in Kontong across four locations. Uh, and we, we wanted to help. You know, we are beneficiaries of, of the richness of Hong Kong. It's been great to us and to our family. We're committed to the city for life and uh, we want to put back. And focusing on young people and arts is something we find exciting and fulfilling. So that's what well, you know, if I may, I'd like to disagree with you on the claim that uh, Kuntong is not central because I certainly think it is central to our project to rediscovering what Hong Kong is. But uh, on that note, you know, when I was mentioning, because I've had the privilege of witnessing this project grow um, from its initial seeding and conception and sort of progress all the way through to this stage, and when I was talking about this idea with many of my friends, you know, most of them are incredibly receptive, but just to play devil's advocate, one or two of them would ask me this question. You talked about the prettiness and you talked about the sort of authenticity of street art. Um, some folks are worried, not me personally, that by putting them and displaying the works in a studio with such wonderful design and decor that we inevitably would inadvertently sanitize them. We sort of, you know, mm. embourgeoisify them and mm. render them into something that it's not. You, have you ever thought about the implications of yeah. how we interact with the artistic, you know, Yep. ecosystem here and the, yep. where to situate this studio such so yep. that you could avoid that sort of, I suppose, um, neoliberal yep. washing yep. of the arts that we see out there. I, I, mean, I mean, that's a great question and a statement though. Th that is the reason why we're here in Hong Kong. Um, Hong Kong uh, is a city that has tremendous large elite platforms for the arts. West Kowloon Cultural District is, is one of my favourite uh, artistic art, art districts in the world. I love M Plus Museum um, more than more than I love the Museum of Modern Art in Manhattan because it just feels more relevant to the way the world is today and the Asianness of the world, right? Um, and the centrality of Chinese culture really to the future of the world in the next hundred years, right? Um, uh, not to mention the Palace Museum uh, as well. So, um, but. There is, there is a problem because that alone it, it, uh, is going to deny Hong Kong the opportunity to truly tap into and leverage the creativity of its young people. Right? It, the elite isn't necessarily um, their destination for a lot of these artists. What we noticed in getting to know, like Pio Hei and so many of, of uh, you know, his uh, contemporaries who, who are creating all, all sorts of artistic expression here, is they're all telling a story about Hong Kong and its history, and a positive story. They're celebrating it. And many of them are working hard for social good, working with disabled people, working with poor people, to, to bring um, the experience and the way they see Hong Kong in a colourful and reimagined way. Um, without an installation like this, and more of them, we hope more will come up now, and follow us, we're not going to have a platform for those types of artists who are actually historians and are engaged with the urban, urban landscape every day. They're not 
you know, flying from one large gallery or museum to another. Um, uh, gives them the opportunity to contribute to Hong Kong's, uh, I think, cultural emergence as an epic city within China and as an epic city within Asia uh, and uh, as an epic global city as a grassroots hub for, for contemporary art. So. What I found really interesting in your answer then, Damien, is you talked about the idea that art could be a form of history, right? That in creating art, we're also seeking to reimagine and uncover history. And as you know, Hong Kong's a city steeped in history. You know, we had our sort of fair share of the, or maybe unfair share of the colonial era. We had the handover in 1997. We're now a part of China. And according to many, we've always been a part of China. That's obviously the case. How are we to make sense of, well, how do you personally make sense of Hong Kong's history? And how have you um, sought to really capture this if at all, through looking at the artworks and also the artistic history of Hong Kong? Well, uh, yeah. Um, I, I think Hong, Hong Kong's uh, past, present and future is on display in a district like Hong Kong. Post-industrial. Um, you know, this district was one of a few districts in Hong Kong that was extremely important in the era of the Asian Tigers, right? Um, and it's gentrifying and there's issues, you know, there's, there's positives and negatives around that. Um, uh, so I'm not a, a student in, in, in Hong Kong or Chinese history, but what I do know is I see, it, I see a, a cross-section of it, if, if you will, an archaeological kind of dig of it here in Kuantong, and I really enjoy being exposed to that. And it's also contemporary and it's new. There's some young people here, and youngish people like, hey, who are really reimagining and taking art to new, to new uh, frontiers, right? Uh, and that's happening here, uh, where the history is kind of present and, and is seen as well as the, the evolution of the public place. Um, uh, you know, I, I think I can proudly say I'm an Australian Republican. Um, I don't think that's a bad thing to say. Um, I know it was the King's birthday yesterday, but I didn't celebrate it. Um, and, and I don't, I don't, um, and I don't, uh, look down on anyone who did, um, each, to, each to their own. But I think the one thing that really resonates for me in Hong Kong is that post-colonial evolution of the city, the post-colonial evolution of the city, and all of the growing pains and all of the joy and um, uh, the re reunification with its sovereign uh, nation, uh, Ch uh, China, uh, is all is a sense of inevitability and importance, and I think um, the, the culture of the place is beyond my, my reckoning as someone who comes from a country that has a 5,000, uh, a 100,000 year history of culture, but really has got 200 years of contemporary culture. Um, uh, I, you know, I see the opportunity here for Hong Kong to re-emerge and prevail as a great city um, as it grasps its future. Uh, and I think art and artistic expression is one way. And you know, letting young people express themselves in a way that sees Hong Kong's past um, entwined with its future is very important for the, for the city's uh, progress, so socially and economically. Uh, we've talked about the youth, we've talked about Hong Kong. I want to talk a bit more about the grassroots, the sort of socio-economic dimensions at play here, right? Because ultimately, when we think about art and its role in social mobility, you know, which is something you touched upon just then, Damien. A core issue that lingers in the minds of many long-term Hong Kong residents is the question of youth social mobility, you know, uh, where we often see news reports, and in fact, I just read yesterday that there have been 23 um, you know, unfortunate episodes and incidents of youth killing themselves mm. in the past couple of months. Depressions at a skyrocketing high, social economic immobility is a problem, housing shortages and accused of public housing, we don't need to go into that either. How can we tackle, you know, these inequalities in general? And what role does art play that sort of, I suppose, contributes towards your conviction and belief mm. in this studio and mm. the studio of KT, right? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say that we have this naive uh, idea that we're going to make a bunch of artists rich. Mm -hmm. um, but then again, Look at Korea, look at South Korea, and it's a, it's a really important tale. It's a really important model. Um, 
there was a concerted effort 25 to 30 years ago to invest in, to celebrate Korean culture to the extent that there was a massive in public investment in, in developing Korean talent. And we know, we know K-pop, but it's, it goes well beyond that. You know, I lived in Korea for five years with my family, and you can see the, the sort of, um, you, uh, the, the, the angst of young people for whatever reason that, you know, there's always yeah, angst in younger generations in any culture at any time. My generation had it, uh, this generation has it. Uh, in, what I noticed in Korea, th th that was channeled into this, this epic and uber creativity, which has is, which is made Korea uh, a massive exporter of its own culture and its soft power, if you like is extremely strong and I think this is an opportunity for Hong Kong. Actually we're missing something mm -hmm. because we, we, we have young people with, with you know the need to express themselves. Many of them now have more tools available to them to create art than at any time in history. And and a desire. And a lot of these folks are never they're not, you know, they're, they're, they're gonna live their lives and, and hopefully live them well, but they're not going to become uh, billionaires. Um, uh, harnessing their uh, creative instincts and the palette that's available to them in urban landscapes like Hong Tong can lead to, I think, some reconciliation to the future and can lower um, uh, the collective uh, mental health and, 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 and you know, anxiousness of the generation. And the last question I'd like to ask you before we conclude this wonderful Q&A is just a preview, actually, an advertisement. So what can we look forward to from Studio KT after your wonderful launch, which, mind you, has been a wonderful success, folks. So for those of you watching online, you're not being here, means that you're missing out. But um, yeah, well, what's next to you guys? I well, certainly appreciate your support, Brian. Um, always. Uh, and advice, as always. So uh, business as usual for us will be to have our Studio KT creators who subscribe to our platform for free um, come along and run exhibitions. And we hope to discover more and find more. We've got now 20, uh, and you'll meet one uh, t uh, uh, shortly and, and have a conversation with him, um, Pure Hay. Uh, we hope to continue to build our uh, family of creators and our family of friends, which is you, people who come and want to listen and, and want to hear from us regularly. And we hope to build a community of angels, right? Angel investors. Mm. Um, and that's not everybody, but people who are prepared to do bigger things to support the grassroots. So at no point are we looking to be a prestigious, internationally renowned institution. We're looking to catalyze from the grassroots up. Um, and, you know, and, and to help Hong Kong become the next Korea. You know, the Hong Kong wave, whatever the Chinese equivalent to Hallyu is, right? Mm. It's something that I think can and should happen. Um, um, uh, uh, growing out of districts like Kontong, but not just Kontong, yeah. you know, in so many different places. So there will be more workshops coming, we'll be featuring more artists, we'll be encouraging artists to run their own shows here, to learn how to curate, learn how to bring audiences, um, uh, meet investors, meet philanthropists, meet each other. Already, just in the last few days, we're having our artists, um, you know, Hong Kong's got a place of silos, right? Our artists who, who come to Kontong, are based in Kontong, are meeting each other for the first time and agreeing ways to collaborate to make, to make a new, uh, take their art in new directions. Folks, let's give it up for Damien. Thank you, Brian. Thank you very much. Um, next up, I've been told that I was due to provide a sort of, a, I quote, monologue. But uh, yeah, a personal sharing really on Kuntong for around five minutes or so before introducing really the protagonist of today's show besides you know, Damien, so jurat juratically, well, so and so forth. Anyway, um, on Kuntong, you know, I, I, my, I have very fond memories of this district, or rather my first memory of this place was when I was six years old at a Chinese New Year celebration and I was walking around Yutwa Gai because that's actually where my uh, mum's family stayed and still is staying. It's a very rustic part of the neighbourhood. It used to be known as a part where there were lots of um, you know, relatively luxurious apartments, but now it's become the street where most of the cage homes and 
Kun Tong are apparently concentrated. So that goes to show how housing in Hong Kong remains a deeper malaise and also problem that plagues our city. But long story short, you know, I enjoy those conversations that happened with my relatives. They were Fujianese and I could barely understand a word of Fujianese, but I understood. I understood despite not speaking the language because ultimately to me, the understanding came less from the words and the semiotics than from the tones, the gestures and the warmth. And that to me is a part of what makes Hong Kong special. But another shard of this fragmented trip down memory lane was when you know, I, I was offered a, a gig, a job, so to speak, as a columnist at one of the largest broadsheets in Hong Kong, Sun Bowl. And the headquarter of Sun Bowl is at uh, you know, this uh, Kyu Fuk Guangcheng, which is right around three blocks away from here as we speak. And I remember walking into that office with trepidation to be interviewed by the editor-in-chief, only to be told by her after that conversation that I was due to write a column each and every week, you know, in a very large Chinese newspaper. And as someone who didn't write in Chinese for five out of my six IB subjects when I was here in Hong Kong doing the IB, it was certainly a daunting challenge, but I took it up nevertheless because I thought that I could indeed have a say. And whilst I was no more than just a 21 year old, I did feel I deserved to have a say. And how arrogant I was to think that I deserved to say, or for anyone to think they deserved to say in this city. And yet that's also ultimately a character that defines a lot of the printing presses, the media, the journalists who work in this neighborhood. Each and every one of them believes that they deserve a say because the people they write for and who read them deserve a say. And then my third and final memory um, that I want to share with you all with Kun Tong is when during COVID I was quite bored really, so I needed to, to keep up my fitness, which was not doing very well, still isn't by the way, but uh, in order to, to make myself a fitter person I went for this ambitious undertaking of jogging along the Kun Tong promenade and golly, golly, that promenade has really been transformed mm -hmm. over the years, right? Some would say it's been gentrified, others would say it got the fountain head, you know, with this water fountain that's apparently quite exorbitant, you know, a lavish uh, display of extravagance and also fountains. But to me, I, I found peace and solace mm -hmm. in the long straws along the promenade, which took me not, you know, incidentally or coincidentally perhaps to a certain company's building in uh, Kun Tong, you know, the company that I cannot name today, so I will not name, <laughs> but uh, it really did give us a lot of life, so many a life, uh, certainly, in that company. With all that said, you know, this is not just a series of incoherent ramblings about Kun Tong, because to me, Kun Tong is a microcosm that epitomizes what Hong Kong is. You've got all these large, um, not even bold brackets, but international investment banks and top MNCs, you know, stashed away, tucked away, uh, very neatly next to promenade. You've also got places like Yu Man Fong, you know, and Yu Wa Gai, where many of my relatives and their friends and family grew up. You know, this, this sort of so-called lower middle, upper uh, sort of working class parts really of town that some would describe as seedy, but I would describe as lively and also vivacious. And then there are, of course, the industrial buildings in which we're currently housed and nested, and this studio is situated. Let's speak to the decades of history and decades of industrialization of this very city, gone but never forgotten. So Kun Tong is, in many ways, something like a place that captures a bit of everything in Hong Kong. And in turn, Hong Kong is a city that has a bit of everything in a world. We've got families of ethnic Indians who've spent more time here in their lives, and the parents have spent more time here in their lives than they ever have in India, because they are Hong Kongers. We've got Jewish families who've built empires of entertainment and food and recreation, uh, no less, for instance, in Wang Dokhet Yun, which is you know, featured quite prominently in a movie called So Mei Yun Cha, which I would encourage you all to watch. You know, again, remarkable figures have contributed towards the entertainment scene. Uh, bringing to Hong Kong these movie stars, Marilyn Monroe, Elvis Presley in the 1950s, the glory halcyon days of Hong Kong. And finally, of course, there are friends and counterparts of ours that moved to Hong Kong from mainland China, whose writings and thoughts contributed to not just the media, but also literature, literature the intelligentsia, the academic and intellectual circles here in Hong Kong. You know, Jin Yong being one of the most noted figures of them all, he wrote uh, single-handedly the Wuxia novels that have come to define the lives and also the childhood of many. Uh, indeed, I count myself as one of the fortunate, you know, fortuitous beneficiaries from Jin Yong's writings. Uh, whether it be Senyu Yin Hong Jun, 
or Sandilhat Loi. You know, these are all epics that are penned by folks who have settled here in this city, right next to us, within 10 kilometers, 20, 20 kilometers from where we are today. And what does this mean? I don't know speak to the fact that Hong Kong's DNA is not just plurality, it's not just diversity, but also an innate sense of resilience and the abil ability to engage in bricolage, in mixing and matching, and ultimately identifying for, you know, paths forward, even if the future seems bleak, even if the future looks dark, even if there's no hope, we create hope by just living, breathing, and doing. And that ties me into the final point today on art. To me, art and youth, you can't separate the two. Because for the youth to speak, it's already artwork, you know? Imagine getting your children to speak, right? I'm sure that's also an art form in and of itself. <laughs> Maybe not in your case, but in many parents' cases it is. But also the words we hear from the youth, from children, from teenagers, adolescents, all the way through to young adults, the pure, the candid, the frank, there's no disguise, no varnish, no polishing or embellishments and bells and whistles. It's raw. And that's what gives it its artistic oomph, mm -hmm. as opposed to the coloration, the attenuation, and all the moderation that we get when we grow up. You know? So seize the day, as Robin Williams remarked in Dead Poet Society. Ultimately, the future of Hong Kong lies with believing that we can and should speak up, not just as members of the youth, but also as friends of the youth, as folks who engage with the youth and provide them with a platform and a space to grow and to harness their own strengths. And that is why I'm so happy and so honored to have been invited to speak here and to share with you all my personal reflections on Studio Katie and Kun Tom. So thank you all very much. Yeah, 也都是在座座都看到的就是我们两面墙上的作品的背后的作家和他们的创作创始人和创始人所以在这个时候我想大家用掌声热烈的掌声去鼓励和欢迎我们的飘黑欧阳俊喜先生好不好 Hello, hey, uh, thank you for attending today's event. My first question would be, uh, where does your inspiration come from? So my inspiration comes from my childhood. I've always loved anime or cartoons, stuff like Transformers or Gundam, etc. And that's why I drew a lot of a cyberpunk style of uh, drawings. Like 我見到就想畫落來了,我要再融入我作品度,或者有什麼事情是特別令你在創作過程裡面深刻的呢? So uh, people would say that the hallmark of the cyberpunk aesthetic is blending the real with the virtual, creating that unique style. It creates a, a special feeling where you're drawing uh, things off this reality, yet it feels out of the world. So when you're out there on the Hong Kong street in your daily life, what do you, what catches your eye? What kind of observations do you make? And how do you incorporate these elements into your cyberpunk world? Um, 
直至到我發現咧，其實香港有好多嘅地標啦，即係講緊觀塘，例如話漁民坊。啊，或者一啲唔同嘅嘅地標喺土瓜灣嘅啟明街咁，其實係慢慢因為誒佢哋嘅發展啊，即係可能係地產項目又好，或者或者佢哋本身有一個發展嘅階段而慢慢消失咗。係。咁喺呢一度嚟講，係令到我有個啟發就，就係話啊，好唔好將佢保留喺度咧？咁保留好簡單啫，咁我影相或者可能我畫出嚟咪得咯。嗯。咁但係對於我嚟講，我覺得仲未夠，我想將佢。發展到一個境界，就係話可能過多，我預示佢可能過多五六十年或者七十年、一百年，佢會唔會變成一個沙巴噴嘅一個城市咧？佢現代化咁不斷咁樣，即係會變成一個、呃、有啲部分可能係沙巴噴，有啲部分可能係仙噴咁。咁、嗯、但係其係一個發展一個平行時空下嘅發展，我就想用呢一種 visual 去表達我嘅呢一種嘅對於科幻嘅概念。So uh, at first, I just wanted to draw a cyberpunk Hong Kong. I wanted to incorporate Hong Kong elements into this futuristic world. And uh, I started from a neutral standpoint at first. But later on, as I discovered, many, many landmarks gradually disappear as the city develops. Things like Yuman Square or uh, out in Togawa, there's the Kaiming Street. And these things, they gradually disappear as the city develops. And maybe um, you would think it's easy, right? If you want to keep the memories alive, you just take a photo or throw them down as they are, but that's not enough for me. Uh, I want to have a prophetic vision of what these things would look like in, say, 50 or 60 years' time. Will we have, perhaps, a cyberpunk city or more of a blend of steampunk and cyberpunk elements? So I've tried to incorporate this imagination and these visual elements into my art. 其實你有冇諗過，就係喺香港，即係講即係講香港啦。咁啊，謝安琪就去嗰個喜帖街啊，跟、嗯、住有啲朋友就講皇后碼頭啊，跟住上面完全係講黃都劇啦。咁對於嚟講，你覺得邊啲地方喺你心目中係最能去代表到，就係你想追求嘅嗰個香港印象啦？嗱，你點睇誒嗰陣時 Transformers 咧嚟香港拍拍嘢嗰陣時，咪喺抄誒執錯，係啦，怪獸大廈。你你有冇諗過有冇畫過怪獸大廈先嚟？誒冇嘅。So uh, in Hong Kong, there are many uh, popular art forms which incorporate these like elements of the city developing and things going on, like in Zeon Ke Song, uh, Hei Tip Gai, they talk about the Wan Chai, the wedding invite street, and in the film uh, To Be Continued, they mention the uh, North Point Theatre, and also uh, others uh, mention the Queen's Pier, for example. Um, and when the Transformers had their film shoot in Hong Kong, they filmed uh, the monster building out in Quarry Bay, right? So have you ever painted the Quarry Bay building? 啊、um, ，其實係咁樣嘅，我自己其實你所講嘅所有嘅嘅地方咧，已經喺我嗰個範圍入邊。咁但係因為我依家一步步咁樣創作啦，其實將將會都係畫緊呢啲地方，包括你話講緊華夏碼頭啊、喜帖街啊嗰啲。咁因為其實誒嗰啲地方好有價值，而且誒、呃、即係講得唔好聽啲啦，佢係已經即係消失咗嘅，即係以往我哋睇開嘅成長嘅嗰、那個地標性已經消失咗。而家我哋睇到嘅全部都係被。被叫做啊，叫啊，叫魔力化咗嘅嘅東西嚟嘅，改造改造咗嘅，係啦，咁變咗誒喺呢個階段就係我覺得可以值得用畫作去保留咯，咁同埋可以令到佢用一個新嘅視覺嘗試去誒、呃、叫做將大家可能想睇到嘅嘢表達翻出嚟咯，而話定係一種好旅遊式嘅感覺去保留呈現。So all these locations you mentioned, including the Queen's Pier, the street out in Wan Chai, these are all like locations which I've set in my sights. I'm, I'm going to do them one by one, but I'm just starting right now. And the common theme here is that all these places, in a way, they're already gone. They're no longer in the form that we remember them to be like. They're all in this new modified mode. And um, I want to preserve these places with a new visual, uh, rather than just like taking you as Um, 
So, uh, in your work, I see that you have preserved a lot of these landmarks which are now non existent. I see uh, the McDonald's, 7 Eleven, uh, Tam Zai noodle stores, and that old Pokhara building, etc. But your aesthetic is also very futuristic. The color, the space, uh, everything just, just is very futuristic. So, I wonder, uh, what do you think of the relationship between space and time?其實我自己覺得這樣去看對我來說因為我是製造一個平行時空我自己覺得時間、顏色、一個方面的東西其實表達一種風格和我對未來的那種設想我覺得是positive的我對於在我心裏面的創作的空間大家都很不同的受眾不同的人看這個作品的時候會有比較不同的感受 so uh, in the previous answer, right, I'm trying to create this uh, parallel space, right, this is not here anymore, and the colors and the styles, etc. Um, in my envisioning of the future, it is still very positive. I know that the cyberpunk style is usually associated with ideas like danger, neon light, they give up that vibe. But um, you can see that in my work, I think that these things can still exist in harmony. That's why the saturation of the colors in my work is still high. And I'm just trying to make these elements coexist in this new space I created. And then Brian's question, so different people from different backgrounds and different demographics may have a different interpretation on your work. So do you ever experience a situation where you think the audience just doesn't get it, or they have a mis misguided interpretation of your work? Yansi 我說這一句我說小巴就可以在那裡落車真實的東西可以告訴大家不同的角度 so that's a great question. This is actually quite common, Brian. Um, so different people, because of how they grew up, they have a different perspective on things, and they may project what they want to see onto my work as well. Say, take this uh, picture of the McDonald's in Kuntong. Uh, so this is actually where my school bus, the minibus, drops me off. And I'll just uh, tell the bus driver, oh, I want to get off at McDonald's, and they'll drop me off here. And uh, some people may look at this and ask me, why, why choose this location, right? Why not some other more significant space, say the Kuntong wet markets, and they would challenge me, and they would say things like, oh, don't you get uh, what you get, like the meaning behind all these spaces? 
And, um, but I think this is different perspectives is good. I can explain my perspective. I can explain why this is real for me. And um, I can explain my concept, where I'm coming from. And turns out, right, this person who, who told me that his son attends, uh, like go to the same school and he's, he's dropped off at the same location. And once he understands that, this location start to resonate with him. So um, they, like, this, this is a good thing, I think, uh, we could gradually align our perspectives. 接下來我會教會叫觀眾提問的但之前我想跟你玩單字遊戲基本上我會問一些快問快答即是我會問一些問題我會試試 So we will have Q&A with the audience next but now I'm going to play a keyword game with you a quick fire round of questions I'm going to ask you very simple questions I want you to give me one word answers Okay 對你講觀塘用一個字嚟形容係點形容啊 Describe Puntong in one word 一個字一個中文一句一句童年 a lot of people don't buy the idea that Hong Kong could stay beautiful. How could we persuade them? <laughs> Very complicated question. <laughs> and you're, you're the best answer we have, I think. I think I want to speak through my art. So this is the best way that I can communicate what I think, what I imagine, even if I couldn't put it in words. What does your family think about your chosen line of work? Uh, they support me? <laughs> Not at first, but later on they started to. <laughs> do, you any, do you have any important pieces of advice you'd like to offer to young up-and-coming artists? So try to show yourself off, be it on social media or through competition. Use whatever means necessary to show your best personality out there. 有沒有想過用一個cyberpunk方法去畫這個自然的畫景或山景和海景 have you considered using this cyberpunk style and apply it to scenes of nature, the ocean, the mountains, etc.? Interesting idea, it does work. Does this mean that our audience should expect new, better things from you? Of course, I, I want to print a book and it would include all my augmented reality work, it's all my cyberpunk work, and I want to, through my book, showcase my perspective, my view on the world. Now我們帶來長文長達 so back to some long questions. A lot of young people in Hong Kong, they would say that oh, they don't really see a bright future ahead because of the lack of social mobility, high land prices, high housing prices, poor job prices etc. and they have lost confidence in the city so either they turn to very fierce and vicious competition or they just give up and stay at home so um, what advice do you have for those people how could they find happiness here 
呢個都係我作為、呃、香港炒師協會會長即係諗緊嘅一個問題，因為其實我都周不時都收到好多一啲 artist 嘅提問，甚至乎有啲啱啱入咗會，佢都會問我呢啲問題。佢話覺得香港好個環境對佢哋嚟講好不利，特別係創作啊咁樣。咁但係、呃、我嘅 moment， 我嘅諗法就係覺得其實係而家班年輕人係欠缺一個喘息嘅空間，我自己覺得係。咁喘息嘅喘息嘅空間係一種誒點、呃、樣去抒發佢嘅壓力嘅嘅一個活動啊，即係對係渠道咁樣。對我嚟講，可能係啊，我覺得作為誒而家係後生嘅 artist， 我覺得佢哋可以試下去外邊去發展，即係去外國睇多啲唔同嘅嘢。咁可能佢哋攞到睇多啲唔同嘅經驗啦，即係做多啲唔同嘅嘢啦，攞到好多唔同嘅經驗啦。咁到到翻嚟之後，其實佢已經係喘息咗，可能佢會有另一個睇法。咁因為我哋永遠都係 stay 喺呢一度，永遠都係望住個湖水。咁當然你你會覺得好多嘢考限制咯，反而係要諗辦法主動去去揾多啲唔同嘅。咁你可以 working holiday， 你可以去唔同嘅地方去旅行，可以去去蝸居，出面住咗翻嚟。即即我覺得係一個全新嘅空間，未必一定要喺香港入邊要揾啲乜嘢咁樣。我覺得呢個係我其中一個嘅睇法咯，我自己覺得。So actually, as the chairman of the Hong Kong Society of Illustrators, I get these questions from young artists, our new members, right, along the similar lines. They would say, oh, Hong Kong has a bad environment for creative types like us. And my idea is perhaps they just need some breathing space. They need an activity or a channel to vent that pressure that has built up. Uh, and I would suggest uh, to these young artists that perhaps they could consider going abroad, experiencing new and different things, and then bringing back the plethora of experience back to Hong Kong, to this city, and that may inspire them to have new ideas. If you stay here, you keep on looking at the same old things, same old scenes, that really limits you as a person. If you go outside and uh, travel, working holidays, etc., then come back, maybe you would find a new perspective and bring that back to Hong Kong. <laughs> 即係啲年青嘅插畫師啦，佢哋好多時都好想希望有一個誒發表作品嘅機會或者一個渠道啦。咁其實我覺得，如果你話你話香港喺香港揾多啲呢一方面嘅嘢俾到佢哋，其實對佢嚟講都係一種抒發，將佢嘅東西可能佢嘅創作之中有啲係抒發到佢哋嘅情緒嘅作品嘅。咁可以透過呢一啲 exhibition， 例如例如誒誒誒，你話 studio K K P 咁樣。咁呢一度其實都係一個方式去抒發。咁而家大家知道咗我哋 artist 嘅 concept， 某程度上都識埋咗。係、嗯、啊，同埋疏導，抒發以及疏導。冇錯。Yes, so I'd like to add one more point. The young people, right, these young artists, they really want opportunities to showcase their work. And uh, if we have more platforms, more chances for them to do so, that would be great. That's also another avenue where they could express themselves, vent that pressure, just like how we have Studio KT here. Uh, we could definitely do something there. And um, uh, that would be great for these artists. 好誒，接下來我哋將會有問答環節，所以現場嘅觀眾，我哋大家有二十分鐘嘅時間誒、uh, ，so we、we'll、have the Q&A section now and feel free to raise any and all questions in English or Chinese to either Pure Damien, a、uh, Pure Hey or Damien or even、uh, yours truly, but I prefer not. So、uh, yeah, let, let's have more questions for these gentlemen over here. So 大家如果有問題嘅話，請提問。So、um, my question is. So my name is Mahesh. We we met、uh, yeah, last yeah, week. Yeah. Thank you very much.、Um, it's great that the studio gives us all an opportunity, us,、mm -hmm. to be able to see your work. But you're not here all the time. You're at your your chairman of the sketch club.、Uh, I forget where you are. Society. Society Illustrates. Illustrates right? <clears throat> so do you have a display over there that you? Show your work, or do you have other artists that are able to present their wares? Number one, first part of the question. Sorry. 咁啊，問題第一條就係問啦，嗱，即係有咁樣嘅 studio， 梗係好好啦。但係你唔係日日都喺度噶嘛？咁我知道你係香港插畫師協會嘅會長啦。咁你哋響櫃會嗰度會唔會有即係可以展示你嘅作品或者其他藝術家嘅作品嘅空間咧？嗯，誒係有嘅。咁因為其實啊，呢、這個問題問得好好。因為除咗你話我哋協會咧。好多時都會同好多嘅唔同嘅商企合作啦，或者 NGO 啦
，咁都希望咧透過大家一齊聯動，可能去向到一啲地方啦，啲展示嘅地方啦，甚至乎咧 ，for artist 嚟講咧。咁佢哋印刷佢哋嘅作品嘅書籍啦，咁又可以寄存落嚟啊嘛，俾大家唔同嘅人認知。咁呢一樣嘢都係我哋向好多唔同嘅機構去會做一個合作。咁上次就係同一個叫做 Fuji Film， 係、嗯、啦，咁就誒整咗一本 art book 咁樣。咁啊啊就結果就好多 artist 都可以參與到其中。咁呢樣嘢都好重要嘅。咁其次就係當然我哋有一個 website 可以俾佢哋展示到佢哋嘅作品，等啲商企。可以喺個網站度睇到佢哋作品，從而揾佢哋合作咁樣嘅。Yes, that's a great question. Actually, our society works regularly with NGOs and businesses to display uh, the artist's work uh, in whatever space we can find. And we also sometimes offer like printed media, <coughs> so we could spread the word by uh, <coughs> uh, by spreading the uh, spreading those publications. And for example, recently we have collaborated and made an art book with the help of Fujifilm, yeah. and many artists' work were featured in that book. And of course, we have our website where we can show. Show these various pieces made by our artists, so that businesses could see their work and consider collaborating with them. Yeah. All right. Um, any other questions? Feel, please feel free to chip. It doesn't have to be a question. You know, it could be got two. So this lady, and then uh, this gentleman there on the third row, in our tour there, fourth row. 新 cyberpunk illustrations. And my understanding of illustration is quite simple. Like we all doodled on our notebooks as a child, and mm -hmm. wherever we can, and that counts as an illustration. But yours is different. It actually moves in a loop. It's kind of like you suspended a space in time. And my doodles are exclusively 2D, of course. Um, I, I think this is a good. I'm not sure what cyber vibe really is, but this cyberpunk type of illustration, it feels great. It, 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 I get the feeling that it's keeping me company. So I wonder um, how could, uh, as a member of the audience, how could we communicate further or interact further with your work? Do 可能改變主義,等他留在自己身邊 
So, so perhaps uh, sorry, sorry. I could. Uh, there are many levels here. I guess the first level. It's quite normal to not get it per se immediately. Um, it's quite common, and I think uh, beyond the work itself, the interpersonal interaction is even more important. I'm talking about the discussions I have with uh, people who have just seen my work. For example, uh, there was an example where a, a person was reminded about his past through my work. I think uh, his or her son now studies abroad, but after seeing my work, uh, he or she decides to keep his, the, the child closer. And uh, for me, I think my whole work, the whole experience is enhanced by the fact that a person is able to express themselves after uh, experiencing my work. So we'll take the question follow up from this lady and then the gentleman over there. And then if you have any more questions, please raise your hands whilst this lady is asking a follow up. Thank you. So what I want to ask is usually, right, when you create something, are you trying to put your, yourself into that work and ask people to interact with you, or are you post, proposing an open-ended question, luring people in to interact with you, which is it? Zido 但只不過入面的密度、構圖各方面就會用我自己的想法去做 Mm. So, uh, of course, the, the picture is very much done in my style. I decided uh, what the visual would be. I decided to pick Kun Tong as the location. Mm. And uh, I guess in that sense, uh, I'm reminiscing about my own past. So you can call it selfish or personal even. But I also think about um, the more public aspects of my work. Uh, for example, uh, I chose the old McDonald's here, uh, here in Kun Tong, and the, some of the basic information here has to be correct. It's a red van, not a green one. It has to be that. And for the rest of the composition and the density, that's up to my discretion. And uh, secondly, after that, then you get more surprises, right? Like I've told, like the, in the story I've told, people ask me why McDonald's, why not the wet market? And um, then we got onto the story about his son, and he remembered that his son also uh, had spent many, many of his, much of his time here. And I guess my painting, my picture, served as a reminder to remind the gentleman of something that he has already forgotten. And that's great for me. Wonderful. So the gentleman over there. Hi, my name's Colin. Nice to meet you. And um, I just want to pick up on an answer to one of your questions when you were asked about your parents and how supportive they were. And that straight to start with, they, they, you know, you said they weren't that supportive. I wanted to delve into that a little bit more. Uh, and and it's, I'll ask my follow-up question now in terms of you and your peers. Can parents and the generation of Brown present as a barrier to young people uh, pursuing in creative uh, creativity 
即係、就是、一啲最主要嘅科技著啊嗰時候，咁佢哋都會有啲聲音，即係可能會唔會係真係、呃、不如不如即係、就是、讀啲好啲嘅啦咁樣，或者向某個方向啦，即係係啦，咁即係計數啊計好啲咁都得啦咁樣。咁、呃、但係我自己就好中意 art， 咁我就所以我就喺一段時間入面，我就透過比賽去證明自己 ，convince 佢，即係即係參加好多唔同嘅嘅。插畫比賽啊，或者以前又冇咁複雜嘅繪畫比賽啊，因為我都有唔同嘅 period 噶嘛，咁就透過呢樣嘢去說服佢，咁直至到佢睇到個成績之後，咁佢就可能哦，咁你可以去試下，我亦都阻你唔到啦，咁你已經咁有決心啦，咁樣係。So this is a great question and near and dear to my heart, I must say. So my parents always knew that I loved art, but when it comes to choosing to major in art, that's a different story. And they would say things like, "Oh, maybe you could study something better, something more math-based." <laughs> um, but I loved art, so I, I, that was in a different period in my artistic career. So I participated in a lot of painting, drawing competitions. I showed my results in order to convince them. I guess at some point、uh, they were persuaded by my efforts, and also they couldn't. Stop me anyway. Come on, come on, come on! You know, you know. That,、uh, unfortunately, you know, whilst they couldn't stop you, and that's fortunate,、uh, we, we will have to come to a stop t- of our event tonight. So,、uh, before we do so, though, I do want to take this opportunity to thank a couple of folks. Firstly, and the one and only Pure Hay. Yeah. Uh, the studio KT team, including、uh, Damien and of course Peter. Yowling,、mm. and please, this wonderful translator here is terrific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The best translator I've seen in Hong Kong. Yeah, yeah. by far, wonderful,、it's、wonderfully、incredible. done. And please, if you're looking for a translator, he is the man to hire. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, last but not least, I'd like to thank everyone here in attendance. Yeah, thank you all very much for being here, for being Katie, and above all, for being QT as well. So thank you all. <laughs> thank you all very much. Thank thank you. You. Parents to be prouder of their kids when they say, you know, I want to create. Look at what I've done. I think the opportunity for Hong Kong is truly immense. So we'll keep working at it. Please keep supporting us. Thank you.